A marital breakdown is the greatest pain a human heart can bear. You're wondering, mm -hmm. can you make it? In the life test scale, where they look at all the stresses, you know, yeah. deep stresses, number one is the death of a spouse. But number two and three are divorce and marital separation. Mm -hmm. It causes really? great pain. It makes people vulnerable. Now can we recover? Oh, okay, so we left with we're in this pain. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, your, the, your spouse you're separated from starts acting like maybe they're interested again. And then they're pulling back, and then you're interested, and then you're pulling back. Mm. How do you know when it's time to say, let's stop? Because you've got to remember, again, we've used this analogy of the rope mm -hmm. or the wire unraveling. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't just break. We've got to make sure that we're all clear about that. This is People have commingled their lives. I, I commingled my life with my former wife for 28 years. Wow. Right. So it's not a clean cut. So it was a, mm. and we did some of that. We did some of that kind of come and, you know, separate and me right. coming trying to see if it will work and we've got couples that that's what they're doing yeah. they're going right. back and forth back and yeah. forth back and forth yeah. Yeah, that is going to happen but mm. there's something that, that takes place naturally and you know the question comes up about you know wh when is the end the end there's no easy answer to that right. question right. The but end, is there something that can at least help well, here's, us well, well here's what we notice here's what happens in, a, in a, when when the, the strands are breaking there's a heightened level of criticism there's a, there's a feeling of contempt that, that starts to pervade the relationship. Mm. I mean, you just don't like the person mm. anymore. I don't You're, want you. you either that or you have moved to a level of detachment. There are couples right now, they, they have moved, they may even still be mm. in relationship okay. or married, I, but they're detached. They, they have no relation, but no I'm connection. But I'm struggling with that okay. because there are times where the relationship is separated and there are absolutely no feelings. Mm. And, and you hate the sight of that person. Yes. I still don't think that means mm. that you can't go yeah. back and rekindle stuff. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I, I, I'll tell you what. What I tell couples now, and, and this is the number one thing that I get emails on, is that when do I know it's going to be the end or how can I? It's not over till it's over. Rekindling can happen. Okay. But you must, here's, here's what's critical. You must handle this time strategically. You right. can't be, I didn't. I didn't because I was a ball of emotion. Right, I made rash right. decisions. Even when mm. I garnered people around me to help me decide things, people don't do that. They make knee-jerk reactions. They rush out and get an attorney. Please don't do that. Right. They start a legal process. They, there's animosity, yes. and so they, so they now they've pulled apart. And now instead of trying to build mm. and make a positive connection, yeah. they just fire more volleys yeah. of venom at yeah. each other, yeah. and then it just goes. And, and it, it it tell you what, you want to end a relationship. That's what you do. Yeah. When your mate says, "I'm done. I want to leave. I'm through," volley some volley some nasties at them. Yeah. That'll just end it completely. Yeah. Whereas the opposite. The rekindling, you know, if you just take, be thoughtful. Mm. And when that person, here's, here's a cool thing. Yeah. That person who leaves you, that person who says goodbye, they will look back. Right. Mark my words, they Someone. will look back. You will have another opportunity. When they look back at you, they will have an opportunity to see something different. Okay. But in the you meantime, can decide in the what they see. In the meantime yeah. of what they look back, you've yeah. got to get healthy. Yeah, but you got you, to, here's the problem. You've seen it, I'm sure, in the counseling too, yes. where, where she's ready to deal with it and he's not there. Yes. And then it goes like this, and he's ready to deal with it, and yes. she's not there. Yes. Yes. And it keeps going. And as a counselor, how do you pull them together unless they're both on the same page? At least willingness, right? Well, absolutely. You know? So they have to, so at some point, I mean, here's the, here's, here's, here's the decision that everybody has to make, is if, if they are willing to work on this mm -hmm. relationship, that's all we need as, as psychologists, yeah. counselors. We need just a yes. little the bit of willingness. willingness. That's yeah. all we need. A yeah. We just need, we need an ounce of willingness. E even, even a bad a counselor can help a couple if they're both willing to work. I don't need a jar yeah. of it. I don't need, I don't need a bucket mm -hmm. of it. Give me an ounce okay, of willingness. Okay, but while the one I love is okay. not willing, right. I have to start working on me right. becoming you a just, healthy you person. You just chill yeah. out. You gather good friends around you. You mm. work on yourself emotionally, yeah. physically, spiritually. Yeah. Just chill yeah. out. And two things you can't do. One is, as you said, don't throw venom at them. But you, the other thing that's just as important is don't try to control them. Oh, the, you, when you try to control them, you end up pushing them away they, just as much because act, they're wanting that freedom, and you try to do the opposite. And they say, act of, "Let me go." There's an act of desperation that happens, yeah. and I empathize with everybody who is yeah. desperate. Yeah, that's right. Okay, you, and you, you guys say don't throw venom. Okay, but where's my venom going? Because my venom's coming out you, of my mouth. You so gather, who's it going you to? You gather friends around you. You get into counseling. You drain that venom. Ha that venom has to be drained off right, with right. someone other than yeah. that mate. Yeah, just because you're, that. Yeah. you're gonna have you're gonna have very few opportunities to connect to this yeah. mate, yeah. okay? Every one of those opportunities better be yeah. golden. Okay. That, that venom, you, though, is the bitterness. 
right? And if the that bitterness, bitterness if over it comes the hurt, out when you over the regret, over the loss, that bitterness is critical. And it's, if you're going to ever get healthy, whether you go with this person or someone else, yes. I always talk about these three Bs, right? One is you got to deal with the baggage. What has gone on between us, yes. whether it's me or me and them, I got to deal with the baggage first of all. Secondly, the bitterness. If I don't deal with the emotions and the and the bitterness and the, the anger and the hatred, if I yes. don't deal with that venom somehow, I'm going to be messing but up. But not it's this with one. her. No, not with them. But but the third one is balance. I got to come back to the point where yes. I am I'm yes. balanced. I got to be healthy. I got to be free. So remember, it's very simple. Simply the baggage, That's the good. bitterness, very and good, the balance. Dave. And then whether you go back into the marriage, balanced and healthy, or whether you have to move on because the marriage is sacrificed because of the problems, there's a healthy state. And okay, you're That's talking. That's perfect. That is perfect. But yeah. you guys are talking about really <laughs> what grabs me is because I see the people who never go to the baggage. They never go to taking ownership of what their part mm. was in the whole thing. And they don't learn from it. Well, they don't go anywhere that's, new with it. After, if a relationship does end, okay, we've got to talk to those folks. The relationships, yes. you know, we, it's, it's great to be, to say it doesn't ever have to end. It's great to say there's all possibilities. But, it does. Yeah. but there are people where it ended. It ended with me. Right. And you are absolutely right. We must go through a season where we look at our baggage, even though I, I so much wanted to play the victim. I yes. still want to yes. move into that place of, of, yes. of saying, you know what, I, I could, I could yeah. gather up some steam yeah. right now yeah. and tell you but guys just, how. Just stop but, a second. Okay. Did you hear what David said? He said so clearly, I just wanted to be the victim. If you keep being the victim, yes. you don't get things fixed. That's right. Own that's your right. stuff. Own your stuff. Now finish. Well, that's it. That's it. You, you, so I have to. Anybody, when the relationship ends, we you must go through a time. I, I, there's rebound relationships. Yes. That is going to happen, yes. folks. It is going to happen. Yes. I'm not going to. I'll preach at you and say it's not best. It isn't best mm -hmm. to go through a season where you take some time and look at how you contributed mm -hmm. to, to the demise yeah. of that relationship. Because what's going to happen is you're going to take all of that with you into right. the next relationship. And I'll tell you. I'm remarried. I'm still packing some of the yeah. baggage around with because me. Because if we're unhealthy, we're going to attract unhealthy people oh, and you just oh, start another man. unhealthy relationship. Oh, and something man. that I learned through probably a couple of years of the hardest time in my life is I realized the pain was going to be there regardless. Yes. So what was I going to do with the pain? And I coined the phrase, don't let this pain be felt without growth. Oh, that's so good. So you've got a choice. Very good. What are you going to do with your pain? Grow from it. Yes. Come back. We're going to give you the bottom line. Thank <laughs> you.